Hi Year 12s, it's Mr. Lim here again and this is our organic chemistry. Look at all the videos that we're going to make. Hopefully they will be much shorter than the last uh, redox set. So we'll go through lots of short little things and we'll see how we go. All right. so today we're going to be learning about alcohols. We're just going to be learning how to name them and uh, identify the alcohol functional group. Okay, so what are alcohols? They're good to drink. No, they're bad to drink. Alcohols are organic substances made out of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and are carbon based and they have an OH functional group in them. What is a functional group? A functional group is a group of elements or on a hydrocarbon which changes the functional nature of the substance. So effectively, what it's saying is that, okay, well, here is a methane. Okay, nice, boring methane. If I was to change one of those hydrogens and put a something else in here, like an alcohol group, it would change the functional nature, which means its chemical and physical properties of that particular substance. Okay, so... Um, uh, let's have a look at what that one looks like. So here's your carbon. Here is uh, it single bonded to a couple of hydrogens. Okay, nice and simple. Okay, and then if it's an uh, alcohol group or a hydroxy group, it's going to have a single bond to an oxygen. And that oxygen is going to have one hydrogen single bonded to it. Okay. So it's got a couple of lone pairs, all right? It's got a um, hydrogen on one end, uh, carbon on the other end. What shape is that going to be? It's going to be a V-shaped around the uh, oxygen atom, all right? And tetrahedral shape around the carbon. So, you know, all this stuff from last year about shapes and stuff you need to kind of know will give you a little bit of an insight on um, some of the structural parts of it when we get to stuff later on, okay? So that's the electron dot diagram of an OH group. Okay, these OH groups can take place of any hydrogen in a hydrocarbon, turning it into an alcohol. So let's have a look. Naming an alcohol can be done by adding a prefix or a suffix to the base hydrocarbon name. So if you don't know your base hydrocarbon names, um, you're going to have to go back and look at all your year 11 stuff because you can need to be able to name all of your basic hydrocarbons up to size 8. Okay, uh, you can name them with a prefix of hydroxy or you can name them with the suffix of an ol. And generally we use the suffix unless there's another functional group which uses the suffix position. So maybe there'll be two fun different functional groups and that's when you will need to use the hydroxy um, uh, in the name instead of the suffix. Okay, so let's try naming some stuff. Nope. Okay, so the position of the alcohol functional group must be shown with a number unless there's no other position for the alcohols and thus no number is needed. Okay, so like methanol, there's nowhere else that um, the hydroxy group can go it's always going to go on the number one so you don't need to say one methanol okay so let's have a look uh the following list is a decreasing order and determine which functional group uh, gets to have the lowest number in the carbon chain and all others must follow that numbering system so we don't know any of these other ones except for maybe the double and triple bonds so we're going to learn about them eventually but what you'll notice is that the alcohol has precedence over the double and triple bonds so wherever that alcohol is, that gets the lowest number, and the double and triple bonds have to follow along with that numbering system uh, uh, if it's different. All right. If you're using the hydroxy prefix, it comes in the alphabetical order with all the other side groups. Okay, so if you've got a chloro and a hydroxy, the chloro will come first, the hydroxy will come second. Okay, go name some stuff. Let's have a look at this one here. Okay, so let's think about our naming rules. We are looking for the longest carbon chain, and that happens to be one, two, three, four. Four carbons in the longest chain, which makes it a but tan something. Okay, so four is but, right? It's an alkane because there's no double bonds, so it's butan, right? Here's our alcohol functional group, all right? So it's a butanol, right? Because that's our suffix, the ol. And we have to tell the position of this butanol because it could be a one butanol or a two butanol. This is a two butanol. Okay, nice and easy because it's on the second carbon, not on the third carbon, not anything else. All right, two butanol. Ooh, look at this. Let's first of all identify the longest carbon chain. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six carbons here. All right, six is hex. Okay, it's an alkane, so it's a hexan. All right. Let's find our hydroxyl groups or our alcohol groups. There's one here, there's one here, there's one here. Okay, 
So just like uh, naming other suffixes, if you've got more than one of them, you've got to state that somehow. So this is hexen tri for three all. Okay, so this is a hexen triol. And where are these uh, alcohol groups? They're on number one, two, and three. So this is one, two, three hexen triol. Also known as, uh, if you really wanted to, to name it something different, hexen uh, one, two, three triol. Okay, that's that one there. Okay, this one here, look, it's got a double bond. Ooh, fancy, double bond. Let's have a look at the longest carbon chain. One, two, three, four. So it's a but tan. Oh, nope, it's not a butan. It's a butene, right? It has an alcohol group, so it's a butenol. Now, where are this butene and the uh, alcohol groups? Okay, so the alcohol group gets preference over the double bond. Okay, which means that, let's have a look here. This carbon here has to be number one. That makes that number two, number three, and number four. Okay, so we're not even going to name this butenol because we're going to have to put the um, numbers somewhere, aren't we? Okay, so we're going to have to name it. Let's go name the, well, we know it's a butene. Butene. So we're going to have to give the position of the um, double bond. So it's butene, but three. In, right so that's showing the position of the double bond and we're going to show the position of the alcohol by saying one all but three in one all okay alternatively you could really give this a one hydroxy uh, three butene but that's probably not as good as the but three in one all. Okay, but that's also an option. Okay, let's have a last one here. Here we have an alcohol group and we also have a chloro group. Okay, how long is this carbon chain? It is one, two, three. So this is a propan. Okay, it's a propan all. Where is the ol? It's on number one, so we can propan one ol. And then we can also give the position of the chlorine, which is three chloro propan one ol. Okay. Or it could be three, and if you really wanted to name it something different, it could be three chloro uh, one propanol. Propanol. Okay. So that's the naming stuff. Uh, fairly straightforward. Oh. Not as short as I wanted it, but the next one will be much shorter. All right.